Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at equivalent ratios. So we have seen the word equivalent many, many, many times before. We've talked about equivalent fractions. We've talked about um, equivalent decimals. We've talked about equivalent everything at this point. And now we're going to talk about equivalent ratios. But the point of me saying that is that at this point, you should know that the word equivalent means equal. Okay, so... The goal of this lesson is I can determine equivalent ratios, which means you are going to look for ratios that are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and get started. There are two ways to look for equivalent ratios, but first off, what are equivalent ratios? So equivalent ratios are two ratios that have the same value even though they look different. So equivalent ratios oftentimes look like fractions, okay? They, they, they kind of look like um, two fra they're well, they really look like um, equivalent fractions, and it's kind of the same definition, two fractions um, that have the same value even though they look different, really. So um, there's two ways that we can check for equivalent ratios, and no matter which method that you use, you're going to get the same result. It really comes down to which one you're most comfortable using, okay? So here I have the same set of equivalent ratios. I have 60 over 5 equals 144 over 12. And if you look over here, it's 60 over 5 equals 144 over 12. So you have to ask yourself, are you more comfortable dividing or multiplying? So let me show you the two different ways that you can check. So, what you can do is you can take the first ratio and you can divide it. So you can divide 60 divided by 5 and you'll get 12, okay? So, you sort of write down that number wherever your heart is content. Then you come over here to the second ratio and you divide it as well. 144 divided by 12 and you also get 12. When you divide these and you get the same number, you know that you have a set of equivalent ratios. If you get different numbers, they are not equivalent. The second way that you can check for equivalent ratios is by cross multiplying. So what you do is you take this number down here and you multiply it by this number over here. Now in this case, 5 times 144 is 720. And then you cross multiply this way and you go 12 times 60, and you also get 720. If you get the same number when you multiply across, you check out again. You have equivalent ratios. If you get a different number, you do not have equivalent ratios. So again, it comes down to what you're most comfortable with. Either way, you should have a calculator to use to help you out. Um, so again, multiply or divide. It's whatever you're most comfortable with. All right, so let's do some examples here. So 20 miles in five hours or 45 miles in nine hours. So a question that I get a lot is, Ms. So it's which number do I put on top? Which number do I put on the bottom? So what I always tell you is take the numbers in the order that the problem gives them to you unless you're dealing with money. When you're dealing with money, money always goes on top. Same as what we did in the last lesson with rates and unit rates, money always goes on top. Otherwise, take the, num the numbers in the order that the problem gives it to you. So here we have 20 miles in 5 hours equals 45 miles in 9 hours. Now, a big key to equivalent ratios, though, is if we're talking about miles here and you put 20 up here, then when you go to do miles over here, you need to make sure that they match up. So don't put miles up here and then in the second one put miles down here because then you will not get the correct answer. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and divide. So I'm going to use the first method. So 20 divided by 5 is going to give me 4 and 45 divided by 9 is going to give me 5. So 4 and 5 these are not equivalent ratios. So my answer is no. Okay? Next question. Three t-shirts for $21, five t-shirts for $35. Now again, money always goes on top. So $21 over three, $35 over five. Now for this one, I'm just going to use the second method. And again, either one is going to work. I'm just showing it to you to switch it up a little bit. So 3 times 35 is going to be 105. And 5 times 21 is also going to be 105. 
So these do check out as equivalent ratios. So your answer is yes. And just to show you that it would work by division two, 21 divided by three is seven, 35 divided by five is seven. So they would have divided perfectly as well. All right, let's do another example. Felicia read the first 60 pages of a book in three days. So I have 60 over three. She read the last 90 pages of a book in six days. I need to make sure that I put 90 pages on top because I had 60 pages on top over here. And I have six days on the bottom because I had three days on the bottom over here, okay? I'm gonna do the division method on this one. So 60 divided by three is 20. And then 90 divided by six is 15. So are these reading rates equivalent and why? So are they equivalent? I got 20 and I got 15. No, they are not equivalent because Felicia is reading at different rates each day. There you go. All right, let's take a look at our next one. Three free throws made out of seven attempts, nine free throws made out of 14 attempts. So I have three over seven equals nine over 14. For this one, I'm gonna cross multiply. So nine times seven is 63. 14 times three is gonna be 42. So I have 42, I have 63. Are they equivalent? No, they are not. All right, you try these two. Make sure that you explain your reasoning. You can use whichever method you want.
ahead and pause if you're not done. So, when you're explaining your reasoning with these, I want to show you how you can use the word unit rate in these to explain your reasoning very easily. So for the first one, you should have gotten know that they are not equivalent, and you can give a variety of reasons why, but again, I want to show you how you can use unit rate. So for example, here, if you were to divide three divided by six, okay? So if you do three divided by six, and I'm gonna show my work down here. So it's three dollars divided by six bagels. What you're gonna get is you're gonna get 50 cents for one bagel, okay? That's for the first store. Then you have nine dollars for 24 bagels. And I spelled bagels wrong. Having trouble spelling today. Okay, and when you divide that out, you're going to get a little bit of a decimal, but you can round. And you're going to get roughly. 38 cents for one bagel. Okay, so in my explanation, I was being general and I said that the bagels have a different cost at each store. But what I wanted to show you more specifically is that you can say, you can get more detailed, and in fact, I want you to be more detailed and say that at one store, bagels cost 50 cents, and at the other store, bagels cost 38 cents. Now over here on the second one, you should have gotten that the unit rates are, or I'm sorry, the unit rates, the um, ratios are equivalent, and they are equivalent because the unit rate for each book is $4. Because when I do 12 divided by three, $12, oh, I really can't write today. $12 over three books, that's $4 for one book. And then when I do the other store, which is $28 for seven books, That's again $4 for one book. So in this case, the unit rates are equivalent. And that again is how you prove your answer using a unit rate. All right, try these two again. And in your answer, in your defense, I want you to use unit rates.
All right, so go ahead and pause if you're not done. So for the first one, the ratios are equivalent. And again, I asked you to defend your answer using unit rates. So yes, they are equivalent because the person made $4 per hour for each job. I found the unit rate, $12 over three hours is $4 per one hour, and $36 over nine hours is $4 per one hour. For the second one, again, I asked you to defend your answer using a unit rate. So yes, they are equivalent because it took 0 0.4 minutes to drive one lap in both situations. All right, that is the end of this lesson. Um, we will do much more practice with this in class, but let me know if you have any questions.